Welcome to our Sunday afternoon question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. Good afternoon, brother. In Hebrews 9, verse 27 and 28, when it goes to verse 28, it talks about Christ was offered once, their sins, many, not all, so numerous, for the elect. And then to them that look for him, he shall appear the second time without sin. Would you explain that, please? Well, here in Hebrews 9, let's start reading in verse 24. It says, For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands. That is, it's done by the work of God himself. Salvation is of the Lord. So Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with blood of others. So God is pointing to the earthly example that he himself established in the law, that the high priest of Israel was to go into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement, every year and bring the sacrificial blood and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and have incense burning and so forth. That had to happen every year because the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. And so it was just really a historical parable. It was teaching the spiritual truth that Christ had to do this. But Jesus is not as earthly high priest that has to do this again and again. And then in verse 26, it says, For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. There is the declaration. There is the answer. If anyone would stop a few minutes and think about that, God has just said Christ does not have to offer himself often as the earthly high priest. If he had to offer himself often like Aaron and the earthly priests of Israel, then must he often have suffered since or from the foundation of the world. And obviously, God is implying Christ offered himself at the point of the world's foundation once, and that would be the starting point. And if his offering up of himself was like the earthly type, then he would not only have to do it at the point of the world's foundation, but again and again and again and again. Yet the whole emphasis that God is making is that he is not like the earthly priest, and therefore he does not have to offer up himself often from the foundation of the world, which means the offering of Christ at the point of the world's foundation is sufficient. It is all that was required. It was then that payment was made for sin. That is the obvious teaching of what God has just said. And yet it is the pride of man, the pride of man who says, don't tell me that Jesus wasn't bearing sin and die for sin on the cross. Well, I'm not saying it. God is. God just said that Christ offered himself at the foundation of the world. And God says it a couple of other times in Revelation. The lamb slain from the foundation of the world. The very same words, from the foundation of the world, as they're found here in Hebrews 9, verse 26. But again, since it is not necessary, it is not necessary for Christ to offer himself often, the acceptable sacrifice, the atonement, was performed at the foundation of the world. For then must he often have suffered from the foundation of the world, but now, now God's speaking of something else, but now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared, and there's that word manifest, be made manifest. Hath he appeared or was made manifest to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself? And the way to understand that part of the verse is just to answer a question. How many times did Jesus Christ enter into the world to demonstrate the things he had done at the point of the world's foundation? The answer is once. Once. He was born in 7 BC. He went to the cross in 33 AD. 
Well, he didn't do it all over again in the second century or in the third or the tenth, and he's not doing it today. He did it once. You see, God has trapped people. He has snared them with that word once. They're deceived into thinking that the one time that Christ went to the cross is the time of the atonement. But actually, God is speaking of once he died for sin, he made atonement at the point of the world's foundation, he made payment, and once he entered into the human race and demonstrated it. And the Lord puts both together in this verse, and as God often does in the Bible, people take up the wrong scent. They follow the wrong trail because they weren't careful enough to see what God had done. And of course, none of us are careful enough to see these things without or apart from God's grace and opening our eyes to understand them. But now that he has, and he has because we're at the time of the end of the world, there's no excuse to go back from it. There's no excuse to avert our eyes from what God has opened to us. And now that he's opened our spiritual eyes to these things, it's very clear. It's crystal clear what the Bible's teaching is on the matter. And then it says in verse 27, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, that's the example God is referring to, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. Whenever we read bearing sins, it goes back to the foundation of the world. One time, one time he did that. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. And that would have to be a reference to his coming at the end, because it cannot be since it's future tense, shall he appear? And Hebrews was written after the cross, after the demonstration was already accomplished. It cannot be referring to his appearance into history, into the world and going to the cross. The tense would not match up. So it has to be a reference to the second coming of Christ at the end of the world. He will not have any sin, of course, at that point. 